Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Davo, Tom and Callum here for the podcast, which means we've got a little bit of exclusive content we like to do before we get into what happened on the show. Yeah, it's quite nice to be able to relax and not worry about these radio rules and, uh, yeah, really kick back and get a little bit cheeky and... One thing we do get, while we're on the show, we have a text line, right? Obviously, we ask you to text in. Yeah. And it's basically a website and it pops up. Every time you text in, we can see them straight away. And most of the time, they're pretty good, pretty fun. We can read them out on air. But every now and then, we get a text that will just take our breath away. Yeah, I'd say about one in five. Yeah, five or so would yeah, be and, something and, that's a bit dicey. And it really varies. Sometimes they're just crook and disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're just like out of nowhere, have nothing to do with anything. And we're mm. like, well, it's, it's it's funny, but what does that have to do with anything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was one today that came in that really sparked the interest in doing this little bit at the start. Well, this guy's a, a, he's a regular texter. Yeah, mm. he comes in a lot and he always uses this, the same phrase. I'll read it out to you because this was about Davo uh, and you'll hear it in the podcast that your car battery went flat because of the light in the boot was on because the boot was open. Yeah, because I hadn't closed it for six months. Yep. Mm. Uh, he has texted in. He said, Davo, take out the light globe sexy girl you need a slap on that fine sexy ass <laughs> and that's not even the most crass text I've seen from this guy no, he... I didn't even have to look at his number to know it's him because he has a trademark calling card of being like sexy girl yeah. <laughs> see I don't understand though I feel like on air I don't give off a sexy aura there's not one my name is Davo First of all, I get called fella by every caller that rings up. I mean, a bit of a spoiler alert towards that segment, but it, we were talking about how messy your car was in Disgusting. general. Disgusting, yeah, yeah. yeah. Full of rubbish. <laughs> well, that's why it attracts a bloke like this, I guess. You're making it seem like it doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. Of course the guy who would send a slap on that fun, sexy ass that... would be attracted to a complete mess of a car. And what's awful as well, we received this text. We all have a little bit of a laugh, but also we're still sitting here in this room and you two hate it. Yeah. You're looking over at me like, this girl, it. this sexy girl over here, bullshit. No, I, I, think it, I, I feel like it's uh, like you're my sister or something and this is like some delinquent. Like, um, <laughs> now, the, but like, the, the, we get so many of these texts come through. I, I don't have the actual text in front of me because we took that time off. Uh, the text line really blows up. It's hard to go back that far. Mm. But um. We had that one guy who kept texting in a few months back. His name was Taylor. And uh, <laughs> he texted in about three or four days in a row talking about my hot mum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And we, tr- we tried to get in contact with him, but he would uh, he'd block our calls. See, I thought he was quite funny. And it was like he was having a gag. But it seemed as soon as we went to call him that he got a bit frightened. And he, yeah, we haven't heard from him since. But it wasn't, when you say um, my hot mum, he wasn't talking about his own hot mum. He was no. talking about Tom's mum. Yeah. yeah. Just, just to like make a, that clear. Just like a random attack. Wasn't just it? really yeah. attacking Tom and his mum, talking Out of about nowhere. how he's always sleeping over. What, and- <laughs> <laughs> what about that bloke who, um, he was like, I, I, I said something about being sick on air. I had a little bit of a cold. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of a cold. Concrete and, and then hardened. he was like, have some concrete harden up. They ought to take you out the back and shoot you. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> but do you know what? We do adore these texts. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it makes the day, doesn't it? I mean, one of the texts that is less crass and just a bit more like, what the hell? It came in yesterday. And somebody just texts in saying, morning discussion. Who wins in a fight oh, to the yeah. death? Tom or Callum? Secret intel I have tells me Tom's unspoken elite martial arts skills so my money is on him. You just have no idea though whether one of us has said something to this person on a night out <laughs> we don't remember or you know. Do, do we want to talk about that text though if there was a fight to the death between the uh, two of you because I, I have my own theory I did taekwondo when I was seven and okay. I wasn't elite yeah. at it. What's and, uh, your... I, would no go, I would go dirty with the barbed wire and whatnot. Yeah, he'd oh, pull hair yeah. <laughs> Go with the nails. Do you want to know my theory? Yeah, yeah, go on. Right, so I do think that Tom would win purely because I feel like you would just be like, ah, 
chill. I don't, yeah, I don't care. This is boring. Yeah. I get bored of it after a minute. Yeah, but so would I. <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, but your competitive streak would absolutely keep you going, Tom. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's true as well. <laughs> well, it's a good discussion. And, you know, these are the texts that come through that are very uh, fun. So yeah. please keep them coming through. Someone also did say naughty, naughty girl to you, Davo, today. Yes, yeah. you naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> and, oh. and then said, next time, look me up. I'll look after you. Yeah, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I guess uh, the next time we have a bunch of cross texts come through, we can revisit this. Oh, please. It's great fun. <laughs> you and Davo, Tom and Callum. Guys, let's get into the podcast. You're listening to Davo, Tom and Callum, the podcast. Going home with a, with a stranger really uh, poses certain risks. And, you know, it's always a touchy area because you're with a stranger and you're in their home, you're in their territory. Yeah. So you don't want to put any wrong foot forward. Who got home with crocodiles or something? <laughs> <laughs> Ter- 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 <laughs> now, before Callum gets into this, I need to also mention, like, yesterday he brought up that he had a one-night stand, mm. and today he's bringing it up yet again. You can't, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. throw yeah, that. We're going to hear about this for about a month. Oh, I, I yeah. specifically didn't really want to talk boy. about it, and it's um, <laughs> and it's came about because it's an interesting story, and you begged me to come on and tell it. I remember it differently. <laughs> Callum groveling outside on his please, knees. Please, please, let I me do really it. want to do it on air. Yeah, Tom and I are $20 the fresh rich. Fresh <laughs> have to know. You guys are rich this week. Yeah. I'm uh, giving you a briefcase full of money to let this happen. No, uh, no, uh, go on. So, yeah, obviously when you're in a stranger's house, it is really daunting. You don't know each other and yeah. you just... Giving it heaps. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and so Tom and I were in the Goldie for uh, last week on holiday and uh, met this nice girl and... <laughs> Went, went back to her place, and uh, I have to say, this is uh, one of the more embarrassing ones I've been a part of. I've gone <laughs> into her bathroom, and she's in this apartment, mm-hmm. and so I like, look at the design of it. The apart- <laughs> like the bathroom is uh, sort of parallel to her bedroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Normal, I've, like I've, an ensuite. Exactly, like it's a pretty much ensuite kind of ordeal. I've gone into the bathroom... And I thought, geez, like, you know, Tom and I have been, you know, we've been at SeaWorld. We've, uh, you know, we've, we've like, uh, we've been walking around. We've been doing the whole Gold, Co- Gold Coast thing, been at the nightclubs, probably a little bit sweaty. A bit warm there yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it so was humid as. I was like, I will freshen up a little bit. <laughs> Let me slip into something a bit more comfortable. Freshen up? What do you mean, like, yonder carrot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, grab a bit of soap, bit of water. And... <laughs> And then, then we go for it. But, like, so I've done that. I've done that. I'm, like, in the bathroom going for it. And um, <laughs> What do you mean going for it? <laughs> Poor Callum, he's trying to get this story out. I'm trying, out, I'm trying. Just... So anyway. You said, I mean, to be fair, you did tell us it was paper towel. I would said there was, like, a bit of tissue involved, yeah. So, anyway. Anyway, all cleaned up. And I think, great, ready to go. <laughs> all hop cleaned out, up. Hop out the bathroom. And as I come into the bedroom area, obviously, like I said, parallel to the, you know, kind of ensuite situation. She's sitting on the bed. I turn and look to my left at the wall of the bathroom. Yeah. There is a huge window. Shame. There is... Shame. Who the hell? Shame. Who the hell? What kind of architect? What kind of dodgy, sick, perverted architect decides to put a window, a massive window, which I didn't notice either because I was so out of it, like onto the bathroom. And it's this huge thing. And it's not even like it lets light in. It's parallel to the bedroom. It's not like a window that goes yeah. outside. Like, why is it there? So are you saying that when you've gone in to freshen up your undercarriage, yeah. she has seen the whole spectacle? Everything. <laughs> even, even, even me doing the fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> there are finger guns in the, in the mirror. <laughs> but I turned to her and I was like, did you... Um, I, was like, I was like, my first question was, what the hell is that? Mm. She's like the window and I'm like it's an odd choice isn't it and I was like did you see everything and she's like yeah so <laughs> so she saw the whole process so that was a really good way to set the mood <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, S- saw me lighting candles in there. It's lucky you didn't do anything like that weird, like, you know, use a toothbrush and brush your teeth or yeah, anything to use, freshen up. Use a shaver. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Then I come out all nonchalant, like, have you been to SeaWorld? It's not... It's not the worst thing, but it's there certainly could, not the best. There could have been nah. worse scenarios uh, in that through, seeing the, through the window. Now, I've got to say, we put a poll up on Instagram basically saying, you know, when did the one-night stand go poorly? One of us... This has happened to one of us here. Yeah. 
And so the votes have come in and it's basically 67% say Callum. <laughs> it's up there. And it's 33 there. say Davo. Oh, yeah. There you go. In the clear over here. <laughs> yeah, all right, Tom. <laughs> it's not something I'm proud of. <laughs> hey, plenty of people getting involved on the text line. Uh, somebody sent us a YouTube link to BBC oh. News and said, how's this for a date gone wrong? And uh, we haven't watched the video, but the title says it all. Woman trapped in window trying to retrieve poo after Tinder date. I remember when this one came out, and it is a harrowing story. Yeah. <laughs> look it I up. And look it so, up. Uh, you can either watch it there or a current affair. It was, uh, it was a really <laughs> serious ordeal at the time. We got another text in. It says, I was in a compromising position, and I kicked my leg and broke the guy's nose. Oh, he went to the sucks. emergency room. I offered to go with him, but he didn't want me to. <laughs> uh, let's just call it here. Someone here said... Uh, Backed over a cat as I was leaving her place. She unmatched with me on Tinder. <laughs> I wonder if that's a n- double meaning there. Somebody else has texted in. <laughs> Somebody else has texted in. Hey, guys, I want to stay anonymous, but back in my early 20s, I got this tidy little piece to come home with me. She also went to freshen up. She was in the bathroom around 30 minutes, so I went to check on her, and when I did... I got to the bathroom door. It was unlocked. She climbed through the window and stolen a bunch of my soap, shampoo, and conditioners. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know why. That's weird. It's, That's... My, it's my dream to see someone climb through a window and see the classic movie, like, the curtains are flapping. <laughs> <laughs> and this one here, it says... The guy I took home, he stayed over and I had to go to work. He was a nice guy, so I let him take his time getting up and leaving. But he stayed in my house all day and cooked himself a pasta bake for lunch. <laughs> it was Jesus. so uncomfortable. Pasta Wait. bake is extravagant as well. Like That's not a microwave meal. You're Te- going to the fridge, you're getting the ingredients. A text just came through here from Nate. This is... <laughs> This is something else. Hey, guys, mine went bad when she rolled over the next morning and said she loved me. I never took a girl home so fast, and I've never done before, lol. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. He doesn't I, like I, the commitment that yeah. way. Surely you'd take He's the a love rack. <laughs> hey, we're going to head over to Salisbury Downs. We've got Ben on the line. Ben, good morning, mate. What went wrong on the one-night hey, hey, stand? Hey, hey, guys. Hey. Yeah, oh, here morning. he is. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good morning, lad. Yeah, good, absolutely. Good. Are you? <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah, it could be better. It could be better. Yeah. Ben, I get quite offended when you when you callers ring up and address us as lads. <laughs> I apologise. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a lowdown. What happened? <laughs> so I've met this girl on Tinder and I've, I've gone out for a few drinks with her. You know, everything's going well. We're hitting it off and yeah. she takes me straight back to her place and shows me our bedroom where we're staying and right across from the bed right across from the bedroom she introduced me to her mother oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. geez. how did that go down <laughs> um i was extremely weirded out at first don't get me wrong but we were both fairly tipsy so i've got to say like the deed was done <laughs> ben so it's a it's a cost of living crisis we're all living with our parents a little bit <laughs> later what did, in life what did the mum think right, of you did, right. did you get the uh, the approval from the mum Oh, I think she liked me, but I, I don't recall seeing her after You're that. Like, yeah, <laughs> I fist bumped her. She didn't cook you eggs in the yeah. morning then. That's it. First rule of the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast is you don't talk about the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast. The second rule of the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast is you don't talk about the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast. I've had a bad run with my car lately. I mean... Who could forget the petrol incident only two weeks ago? <laughs> the petrol incident of 23, we will call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, it was only, uh, yeah, what, yeah, two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago. or so? Um, yeah, obviously you ran out of petrol, came into work late, you had to get a jerry can from the uh, servo and then uh, came back to work a few hours later. Now, yeah. is that bad luck with your car or is that just on Negligence. You? <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit of both, but <laughs> over the past few months, I've been having some trouble with my battery and it's been going flat every now and then and we've had the RAA out a few times and they sort of look at the battery and they say it's fine um, we're not really sure why this is happening and they recharge it and off I go and it's fine Yeah. Um, well while we're on holidays my car battery went flat again got in the car ready to go ready to tackle the day yeah. you know take on the world mm, and nothing so look my mum came to the rescue Irene and it's a bit cheeky because we used her RAA 
she oh, okay. would be so angry at me saying this on air. Yeah, but... I'm glad you're admitting it to live radio. Well, the thing is, is you know, obviously we used hers because I'm a 32 year old woman who let the payment lapse. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not the first time you've done that. Your mum's more established, I guess. You know, yeah, she yeah. has, you know... Been in the system longer. Yeah, she, yeah. she's seen it all. <laughs> she's friends with the Energizer Bunny. They yeah. hang out. So anyway, the REA bloke rocks up and he says the same thing. He's like, the battery should be fine. But he did some further inspections, so... Mm. Uh, he sort of opens my boot and it is full of rubbish. Shame. Shame. Like rubbish, crap, like, everything. What, what kind of rubbish? Are we talking like... Macca's uh, yeah. or... Food. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Food, crap, like just anything. Like uh, When papers. the rubbish won't fit in your back seat anymore, you transfer it to the boot. Yes. Because <laughs> who needs a bin? Yeah. And usually I would be mortified by this, you know. I would be yeah. horrendously red-faced. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let me clean this. But... Don't tell me you just don't care anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> There's a big wheel of Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> Been in there for months. There's a possum in there. But no, I oh, that's was... Steve. <laughs> They're mates now. <laughs> no, I was sitting pretty inside because my mum had to claim that the car was her oh. own. Oh. <laughs> so okay. my... Bit of a loophole. <laughs> So my mum, Irene, is outside. I'm watching her from inside. I can see her face. She is seething. Well, because of course, of course, your mum, Irene, then has to, you know, she's doing this loophole. She has to claim that the car's her. So how is she going about, you know, facing all the rubbish and trying to, you know, she has to pretend that's all her wrongdoings. Yeah, exactly. So she's sort of going, oh, um, sorry, I'll just grab that. She's clearing out my rubbish. I'm yeah. watching her from inside like an absolute <laughs> asshole. And then, look, the guy goes, hey, so the reason your boot, your, the reason why your battery keeps going flat is because you've broken the boot latch and the light oh, keeps okay. draining yeah. your battery. Ah. Yeah, that'll but do it. that happened about six months ago. So, how and and your battery's gone how many times? Like six. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It adds up. It adds yeah. up. It's all my fault. <laughs> You're listening to Dave O'Tom and Callum, the podcast. I found this little article, right, it's over in England, and it's about these urban explorers, you know, they're, you, you see these urban explorers everywhere, they basically go into like the tunnels, the catacombs, like abandoned warehouses around cities, There's, mm-hmm. I know there's a, a Adelaide page of these people that go into the tunnels under the city, I think it's called like Jim's Urbex Explorers or something Ooh. on the Instagram. Well, it sounds like you know a lot about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> secret society is a part of the leader of it? Don't ask me any more questions, okay? <laughs> the old, the, the, I need the, my lawyer present. Yeah. Uh, AGM is next week. <laughs> See me down in the tunnels. But no, these urban explorers over in England, uh, while they were exploring, came across a secret rave taking place in an underground nuclear bunker. Wow. Hey, look out. Yeah. Party time. So as they're exploring, they just start hearing this like, doof, 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 <laughs> like house You're music like, pumping through the walls. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jeez, either there's a bomb that hasn't gone off and it's just ticking, <laughs> or uh, it's a uh, Well, it's Fisher's a rave. latest track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, they've come across these doors that are like locked shut and they're knocking on them and these people answer and they're, uh, they're, they've they are been nice enough to let them all in and they've basically explained to these explorers that like, yeah, we we often hold secret raves all around England, mm. but it's all on the hush-hush, you know, Ooh. invite only. Not everyone can find out about it and it's like, oh, not everyone's always invited, so yeah. yeah. God, I have to say a nuclear bunker would be one of the cooler ones. I mean, yeah. it's very rustic. It's a bit Berlin-y. Well, they managed to get like all the mains working as well so they got all the original lights they got all fairy lights uh, as the doors opened all this smoke from the smoke machine came plummeting out of the doors and I mean the pictures we'll get some up on the Instagram at Fresh 827 but it looks cool in here strobe lights and everything people just having a good time but I've heard about these secret raves here in Adelaide mm-hmm. right I, I know I heard of one last year that was like at an abandoned warehouse Ooh. and it was like this uh invite only page on facebook and then they'd be like stay tuned for the next one never got an invite to the next one oh, <laughs> didn't make the cut <laughs> didn't make the cut i didn't what go i didn't go to the first one so. <laughs> where was the rave so when i was over in croatia i went into this rave cave so in this cave in the side of a mountain they literally that's put cool. on this whole rave and it was so much fun yeah that's very cool i mean not that it's uh wednesday but i'm sure a bunch of the wine backers from back in the day they would have their nostalgic spots surely in some parklands you know 
know, all the weird spots you'd have a rave. There'd be heaps from back in the day. Yeah, I remember going to a bush doof a couple of years ago. That was like on the side of a cliff. A bit dangerous, Ooh, dangerous, but it was cool. Yeah, that's it hectic. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you feel alive. <laughs> I remember I went to one in Melbourne recently and mate tried to take me there. Um, but it was full on just like a really crappy rec center and it felt like a school disco. <laughs> like a blue and, light. And it, it honestly like was hyped up because in Melbourne, I guess, you know, I think they pride themselves on a little bit of like an underground scene and being a bit nifty in that aspect. Yeah. But it was bloody awful. And they uh, they only did cash for drinks as yeah. well. $2 cans of coke all night. Yeah. <laughs> you did get a, uh, yeah, you got a few snake lollies as well in yeah. a little yeah, bag. Yeah. little canteen going on there. <laughs> hey, we're going to cross over to Port Adelaide. We want to know where was the rave. We got Brett in Port Adelaide. Brett, good morning, mate. Where was the rave? Oh, how you going, guys? Uh, yeah, just about seven years ago in the peak of raves, I reckon, in the early 90s. Um, it was in an old wool shed in the port, which I believe now is Pirate Line. Wow. Okay, oh, okay. so yeah. was, was this a bit of an underground spot? Was it well known? Uh, no, it was uh, a couple of my mates from the footy club were friends with the DJ, so oh, we yeah. used to get the inside word on where they were. But they were, yeah, they were sort of secret ones. But, yeah, once they were on, word got around and they got pretty hectic. Yeah, it was back in... When I was a naughty boy, no, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, Brett. I think you still are. Hey, Brett, <laughs> did you did you go to many raves back then? Um, probably not. Heaps. I, I wasn't the um, yeah, right into it, but I did go to a couple because you know, mates in the footy club dragged me along. But um, yeah. they were good. Yeah, they were very good. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird fun fact. But back in the eighties, my dad actually owned a nightclub in Port Adelaide, and he'd have raves there all the time. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> secret what? secret why life. We, why are we just hearing about? Yeah, this? I don't know. It just it triggered a memory. How, how long did he own it for? Uh, only a couple of years. It sent right. him bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> hey, we're going to cross over to Nick. Good morning, Nick. Where was the rave, mate? How you doing, fellas? How are we? Yeah, good, good mate. Yourself? Once again, not a fella. Yeah, not too bad at all. Oh, sorry, fella and fillet, my bad. <laughs> What's a fillet? Um, fillet. So, 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 me and a couple of buddies were riding in the forest up behind Mount Pleasant and um, you know, we pulled over to have a bit of a rest and yeah. it's about 11 o'clock at night and we're in the creek section and we just hear this is, 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 is from the, from the, from like just coming from the distance. So, we ended up just uh, just pulling over every ten minutes. We go riding, getting closer and closer. Yeah, and we seen some seen some lasers and all that, and smoke coming from uh, from coming from somewhere. So we ended up ditching the bikes and going for a walk, and just end up coming across this. Uh, just rave in the middle of the forest, full kitted up in a motocross gear and stayed there for a few hours and had some fun. <laughs> How Jeez, good! Dude, right. Jeez. <laughs> in the motocross gear too, you would have been uh, looking the part for the rave. Oh, yeah, yeah, it freaked a few people out. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Nick. Thanks for getting involved, mate. Hey, we got Chris on the line here as well. Chris, mate, where was the rave? Hey, mate, we used to have raves at Port Gawler at the motorbike track or uh, up at Pondy, mate. It was called Enchanted Forest. Oh, hey, so what's, okay. the, what's the go with the Enchanted Forest? It sounds intriguing. Uh, look, mate, it was awesome. It was a secret location, and uh, you were only found out the day before. You had to go to Macca's and get a secret map, and then, uh, oh, wow. yeah, that was huge, mate. I had a hairdresser, um, this bloke. <laughs> this bloke did my hair. Um, it's, uh, it's, it'd be a bit older, and it was a, a month ago or something, but he was telling me about this, that he used to organise these raves, and you would go to, yeah, places like Macca's, and like there'd be a secret spot to be handed the address. Like, that's cool as. Yeah, it was awesome, mate. There's nothing like raving when the sun comes up, I tell you. Totally <laughs> and w- wasn't it like back in the day you had to like go through different routes? You had to go through like point A, point B, point C to finally get the proper location? Uh, not the ones that I went to. It was just, yeah, you just found out, you know, the dot before yeah, where God. you were going. So Were you a bit of a rave head back in the day, Chris? Oh, mate, I loved it. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let's bring tell. it back. You're going to need a bigger podcast. Dave o, Tom and Callum, the podcast. I feel like book clubs are such a strange uh, scenario to be in. And, you know, I've never been in one, but from what I've heard, it really does have that trajectory where it starts out, everyone's really enthused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You grab the book, yeah. maybe it's a week or two, it's still pumping, it's still kicking. By the third week, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's sort of dipped off a little mm-hmm. bit. Fourth week, you're probably all just drinking. 
Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that's probably t- how it's, these it's more so, go. It's more so turned it's a into social thing. a social party kind of thing. Grab a few drinks, sit around with your mates. The book Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets, is flown out the window. Everyone knows no one's reading the book, so you come up with punishments for people who didn't read the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It turns into this weird game, and you know, uh, I feel like a lot of people, you know, they they despise the book clubs for this reason because it gets a little bit boring. It gets a little bit like that. But there's a California-based book club uh, over in America. And they've uh, they've been honest with how it's run, and it's a very big book club over there. They all get together, but they've called it the Procrastination Book Club because the Procrastination <laughs> Book Club because they know for a fact they know for a fact. Let's not let's not pretend here that everyone's going to be uh, you know on the, on the dial trying to read this book promptly. Mm-hmm. They're aware that everyone's going to be procrastinating, so they've spent twenty eight years trying to read this one book, and they've just <laughs> finished. You'd never. God, what is You'd it? A hungry, hungry you... caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> page by page, we will dissect yeah. this. Why is he eating like that? That's a, Why is he so hungry? <laughs> that's a huge commitment. I can barely commit to a subscription for 12 months. 28 years. Literally, can you imagine new members coming in? They're like, how long have you been here? And I've been, I've been serving since... Uh, <laughs> 26 years ago. So what is this book? It's uh, it's called Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce, and uh, it is a Penguin classic. It is uh, a classic piece of literature, but it is known for its uh, experimental language that's really hard to dissect. Okay. Yeah, okay, like a clockwork orange. Yeah, yeah, I guess that has its own kind of language going yeah. on in it, mm. but like way more confusing, I'd say. Do you um, have a snippet there? Yeah, so apparently they've been spending like two hours per page analysing it. That's oh. why it's taken so long, and of course I guess <laughs> Oh. holidays and whatever going Sounds on. Sounds like my worst nightmare, just sitting there <laughs> like, stuck on one page. Who on earth, and after 28 <laughs> years... Surely at that f- point you just read the first, last page in the blurb and hope for the best. <laughs> is there, <laughs> is take, there a made-to-movie? Take a stab. <laughs> There's, uh, I'll read a page for you. Rockbound, hoa, hoa, hoa. In a swim, swam, swam, all the Libby long night... The Del Del Dappling Night, the Night of Blue- Blueberry Bells, her flitcher toot in a tricky trotches. Oh, Katerina, Katerina. Um, I'm so- concerned he did that off the top of his head. He wasn't reading yeah, anything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's an original Spe- piece. Speaking in tongues. <laughs> You're listening to Dave O, Tom and Callum, the podcast. You know these big artists that are around, you know, you've got your Beyonce's, you've got your Lady Gaga's, mm, all yeah. your Katy Perry's, these big artists, they're constantly pumping out music. Mm. But, you know, the quality of these songs can sometimes wane, right? Yeah, well, it's going to, like, dip and go up and, you know, that's the life every, of a musician. Yeah, every artist, even the best, you know, have their bad songs. Of course. But also I think the thing is is that because you're the face of these songs, these songs that come out are really sort of now attached to you forever. Yeah. And sometimes these celebrities, they're not happy with the choices they've made. God, and imagine funny- being Nickelback. Yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is, if you are so good as an artist and if you have such good songs that as soon as you make a slip up, people are going to attach that to you forever forever, yeah. I mean, just based on how different it is in quality. Yeah, I mean, there's some pretty famous ones out there. You know the band Radiohead, of course. Of course. And their very, very popular song, So Creep. many hits, yes. But I'm a so they hate this song. The yeah, band yeah. itself hates this song. Now, we looked it up and basically they hate it because that guitar move at the start of the chorus there was actually one of the band members trying to stuff the song up, but it ended up making the final track. Mm. <laughs> right, yeah. A bit of sabotage. Think, yeah. Yeah, and imagine like being, because in that era as well, before people knew they hated the song, they would have got so many people at concerts cheering out for Creep, wanting mm. them to play. It would have been infuriating. Well, it's they have so many hits, but that's definitely by far their most popular Absolutely. song. Absolutely. Which yeah. sucks that they don't like it. Yeah, they even said they don't like the lyrics, and I think it's a great song. But yeah, anyway. I, I really like it. <laughs> another artist, another huge artist, one of my absolute favorites, Favorites, Miley Cyrus. Mm-hmm. Now, she regrets bringing out not one but two songs. First one, Party in the USA, because she doesn't like the sound Track. of her voice in it, even though she knows it's a banger. Yeah, it is a banger. And she also hates one of her biggest songs, Wrecking Ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. Yeah, she hates it because basically she reckons that no matter what she does, she cannot live down being the naked chick on a wrecking ball. 
Yeah, right. I thought that was a great era of Miley. Oh, I loved her then. Yeah, that was, short that was, hair, that was crazy fun. antics. I think at the time when she brought out Wrecking Ball, there were also quite a lot of memes around the, the film clip of Wrecking Ball, so that probably doesn't help. Oh, absolutely. And now the latest star to come out and say they absolutely regret one of their songs is Pink. Now... Look, to be honest, I'd say there's a few songs that she could regret. I wouldn't go that far. I, mean, right. I think Pink's a bit of a rock star, but... Well, <laughs> we'll get into that. I vouch for her. But she's come out and she says that she, released, she, she regrets releasing a song for the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, and it's called We've Got Scurvy. <laughs> One, two, three, four! Our gums are black, our teeth are falling out. Oh. We got spots on our back, so give it up and shout. I'm cringing. <laughs> we got scurvy, we need some vitamin C. We got scurvy, we need a lemon tree. We got scurvy, we just chilling on the sea. Yeah, that's awful. I don't, I don't <laughs> know Sorry, if it's like, friend. um... I don't know if it's the instrumental in the background that's really annoying or if it's the descriptive language of someone having scurvy that really puts you off. I think what put me off is is the very start of it where she comes out like this. One, two, three, four. And then it's just that. Sounds like having a bar in some bar in Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, I know this chick puts on a show, but you imagine her on the silks to this song? Sometimes me think, what is friend? Then me say, friend is someone to listen to Dave or Tom and Callum podcast. Mmm, cookie. Nom, 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 nom. Donald Trump has been in the news a bit lately. Well, probably for the last six years. Since about 2017, yeah, yeah, when he got elected. (laughs) I mean, we did speak about him recently promising to pay for an entire bill at a cafe and then ticking off right before... You know, footing the bill. He made like, a huge call, and I believe people were chanting Trump yeah. uh, because he was going to pay everyone's bill at that cafe, and then he just uh, flexed out probably in his Rolls Royce. What a guy. Yeah. <laughs> but also, he's obviously been in quite a bit of hot water recently, which you'd think would make him a little bit more humble, but instead he's come back pettier than ever. Yeah, he's doubled down on it. He certainly has. In a recent rally in Iowa, he's come for Joe Biden, but instead of attacking his policies or, you know, things that actually matter, he's turned into a bitchy teenager and come for Joe Biden's big rig. <laughs> He's got a consultant somewhere. This is the worst consultant in politics that thinks he looks good in a bathing suit, right? <laughs> I have a much better body than him. <laughs> but I'm not really sure that I want to expose it with the sun blaring down and the sand, the surf, the wind, you know. You, I mean, you know, it's not a pretty sight. Do you reckon Trump's just online looking at, like, AI photos of himself and that's why he thinks he's got a better <laughs> oh, body? He's got a, war- he's got a warped perception. Just I- on looking at Google Images comparing Biden and Trump, I feel like I feel like neither of them would have no. the best rig in the world, but uh, I think Biden would be better than but Trump. They're both two gross old men. Oh, okay, you just don't have to be rude. <laughs> but also, guys, why are we even talking about Joe Biden's <laughs> body? <laughs> and why is the crowd going nuts? Yeah, I was gonna America say, is a jungle. What, what is wrong with Americans, like, <laughs> cheering on such a thing? Like, all politics out the window, and he's, uh, he's, he's the saviour. <laughs> Joe Biden is an 80-year-old man. <laughs> 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 Leave him alone. Next, next Trump will be targeting like, look at the medication he's taking. Look at, <laughs> did you see he takes his pills at 5pm? Oh, I'd say mine at 7pm. He had a pimple the other day. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.